Hi there, my name is Namir Asai and I'm making my first commercial indie game. At the moment, I'm trying to fix a glaring issue the game has, which is still ugly as a fire truck. I've got absolutely no drawing skills whatsoever, so I'm practicing. In today's video though, I want to go back to happier times when it was just me, Unity, some code and a black dot, and it was all totally fine. I want to share every step I take to make this game happen, so you can follow along and share the journey. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to not miss the future devlogs. Now that that's out of the way, let's see how I build the 2D top-down combat system for Tsuchigui. I want to focus on the combat's design rather than making a step-by-step -step tutorial, so... BEAM! Voila! We've got a sprite running around, and it works with controllers too! Here I'm using the classic twin-stick control scheme where you move with the left stick and rotate with the right stick. Next, let's give the character a weapon to swing around. Kids, gather around. Uncle Sai will teach you a little bit about this wonderful thing called grey boxing. It's that time in the game dev process where you say suck it to art because you're testing the mechanics out so who really cares if it's pretty or not. And it's not like you're showing it to anyone, right? Then you can put shapes together like this and call that thing a sword. No, no, it's certainly not a rectangle. I don't know what you're talking about. Now there's a lot of different ways we could go about to implement combat. Let's take a couple of deep breaths and make some design decisions. I think it's worth doing now before your code looks like this and adding a new feature feels like this. No. In my previous video, we talked about the design pillars of the game. The first one was that we want the combat to be punishing and tactical. Also, I want to keep the control scheme clean and efficient. What does that actually mean, apart that you play it with a stick or two? Do I use combos like in fighter games? A light and a heavy attack? Or an innovative control scheme like the path to die, where you rotate the right stick in different directions to swing your sword? We said clean, so forget about that last option. We also said efficient, so I think we'll stick to one simple slash. As I subtly hinted at in the first video, I want the player and enemies to die with one hit. Having both a light and a heavy attack seems unnecessary when a single slash can be so lethal. So let's do that, let's add a slash to the game. For hit detection, I was lazy and decided to follow Bracky's melee combat tutorial. I might change it up a bit later, but the important part is that you can launch methods from a specific moment in your animation. Super useful and powerful, you can trigger anything you want from this really. You can make it send sparks, turn some switches on and off, I'm sure you could make it do your dishes even. To resolve the hit and tell the unit to die, I put half script on any object that can be killed. Even though we're doing a one-hit system, having the health as a value will allow for more flexibility later on. If we want some objects to be destroyed in more hits than one, like walls and whatnot, I'll just have to tweak the health points of the objects in the inspector. No biggie. Now, the main appeal of a one-hit kill combat is how brutal it is, right? So let's add some- That's much better. Now that we've got that working, it's time to focus on the second input I'm planning for the combat. Parry. A lot of games use a hold to parry system, I think that would allow the player too much safety and encourage them to be passive rather than active, we don't want that. So I'm keeping a trigger rather than a boolean input for this one. The code is kept simple. When you enter the parry animation state, I make the is parrying boolean on fighter true, then make it false on animation state exit. The hit detection will check for that boolean before telling half to take damage or not. I know we're grey boxing, but even then it's worth taking the time to add some simple particle effects. Player visual feedback is part of the experience. Now look at that. Here you go, we've got a basic combat system. I want to add a little bit more flavor though. Since the combat is going to be quite unforgiving, I'm going to add another way to save the player's butt. I add an is striking boolean that gets turned on and off during the slash animation. Now if you strike at the same time as your opponent, both fighters get stunned. I think it's a bit more fair that way, rather than both dying at the same time. Since I've got a new stunned animation, I'm gonna make a successful parry stun the aggressor, so that there's some added benefit to parrying. To test all this out, I make a simple AI to make the enemy unit go to the player and attack them repeatedly. Ouch! I guess we've got the brutal part nailed down. Next up, we should be looking at fleshing out that AI a bit, to give the player a fighting chance. I'm thinking of a circling mechanic where the AI hesitates before attacking, keeping a safe distance. For now though, I think that's my time. In the next video, we'll look into how to set up the AI using a state machine and how I ended up rewriting the code many, many times before settling on using the A-Stop Finding Project Asset and Steering Behaviors. If that sounds interesting and you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps grow the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one!